Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how we can add and change HTML elements using JavaScript. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'll break down creating and appending elements to the DOM in three simple steps. We'll create the element, add any necessary attributes or properties, and then append the element to the DOM will be the final step. But before we do begin within our HTML file, we'll create a few boxes for this exercise. These will be div elements with an inner paragraph. The first will have text of box one. With this development, I will give it an ID of box one and a class of box. Let's copy this development, paste it three times for a total of four boxes. We'll create box two, box three, and box four. I'll apply the following CSS properties. We're selecting the box class, add a border of three pixels solid, set a width to be 100%, and a height of 125 pixels. And we are ready to begin. Step one, we need to create the element in order to work with it, right? I will create a constant of new h1. h1 equals, we will select our document, use the create element method, then as a string, pass in the type of the element we would like to create. We'll create an h1 element. We now have an h1 element to work with, which we're referencing as new h1. Let's add some attributes and CSS properties. Let's do one for now. I will take my new h1 element, access its text content, set it equal to, I like pizza. And then we just have to append this element to the DOM. To do that, we will access our DOM with document. What element would we like to select? Let's select the body element of our document. And then we will use the append method. Pass in our HTML element as an argument. And there we go. There's our H1 element. When you append an element to a parent, this new element is the last child. You could prepend if you would like it to be the first child. So let's use the prepend method. Change append to prepend. And it's now at the beginning. Let's add an additional attribute. We will take our new h1 element, set the id attribute equal to my h1. And let's see if that worked. I will right click on this element, inspect it. Here's our h1 element. It's the first child because we're prepending it. This h1 element has an id attribute set to my h1. Let's change the CSS properties of this element. I will access new h1, access its style, access its color, the font color. Let's set it to be red. But better yet, let's set the color to be tomato because I like tomatoes. I think that's a better looking shade of red. Let's also center the text. New h1, access its style, access the text, align property, set it to be center. And the text is now centered. When I append this element, I would like to append it to within box one. I will select box one as the parent rather than the body. We will access our document. We need to select an element. We will select box one. We could use document.getElement by ID. The ID that I'm going to select is box1. I will then follow this with append. Append our new h1 element. So our h1 element is now within box1 and not outside of it like it was previously. I could append this h1 element to box2, but I would have to select it. We will get element by ID, select box two to put it within box two, box three, and box four. When I'm appending this element to box one, it is the last child of box one. If there are any child elements within this box, which there is, we have a paragraph element, that h1 element will come after and not before. So if you would like this h1 element to be the first child, we can prepend it. I'm going to copy this because I don't want to rewrite it. We will prepend. 
prepend my new h1 element, take box 1, prepend the new h1 element. So my h1 element is now at the top. It's the first child. The paragraph element comes after. Let's do this with box 2, box 3, and box 4. What if we would like to take our h1 element and sandwich it between box 1 and box 2? I could select box 2 and insert that new h1 element before it. Here's how. I will create a reference to box 2 equals document dot get element by ID. We will select the ID of box 2, access our document, access the body, because box 2 is a child element of the body. Use the insert before method. There's two arguments, the new element and the current element. The new element is going to be new h1. That's what we're trying to add. The current element is the target we're selecting, box 2. Insert the new h1 element before box 2. And this is what that looks like. This h1 element is now between box 1 and box 2. Take the new h1 element, insert it before box 2. If we were to do this with box 1, well then it's going to be before box 1. Let's try this with box 3. Our h1 element is before box 3 and box 4. What if these elements don't have IDs? How do we select them then? Here's how. We will use query selector all to select everything that has the box class. I will create a constant of boxes. This will be a node list. Access our document, use query selector all. Select everything that has a box class. We will use the insert before method. Access our document, access the body, insert before. We have the new element to add and the current element. The new element is new h1. The current element is our node list of boxes. We can access a specific element from this node list with an index. If I accessed boxes at index 0, that would give me box 1. Boxes at index 1, that's referring to box 2, box 3, and box 4. So you could use query selector to select many elements, store it within a node list, then select those specific elements with an index number. This is optional, but at any time if you need to remove an HTML element, here's how. Let's append our new h1 element. We need to select the location in which we can find that element. It's within the body of our document. Document dot body. Use the remove child method. We will remove our new h1 element. And it's gone. What if this h1 element was within box 1? All right, I will append our new h1 element to box 1. And we need to add the IDs back to these boxes because I forgot to do that. We're appending our new h1 element to box 1. When I try and remove it, it doesn't work. It's still there. We need to select box 1 and not the body of our document because box 1 is the direct parent of our h1 element, not the body. The body in this case could be like the grandparent. Instead of selecting our body, we will get the ID of box 1 or some other element selector to get box 1. I'll use get element by ID because it's easy. Get element by ID. The ID that I'm selecting is box 1. Remove the new h1 element that's found within it. And it's gone. If at any time you need to remove an element, select the parent of that element, then follow it with the remove child method. Pass in the element you're trying to remove as an argument. In this last example, we're going to work with ordered lists. So going to our HTML file, we will create an ordered list with a pair of OL tags. I will give this ordered list an ID of fruits. We'll add a few list items. The first list item will be for an apple. The ID will be apple. 
we'll create a list item element for an orange. ID will be orange. And a banana. ID, banana. I'll add a little bit of CSS styling. Going to the CSS style sheet, I will select the ID of fruits. I'll add a border of three pixels solid for this demonstration and increase the font size to two REM. All right, and that's what we need to work with. We'll now be creating a list item element. I will create a constant of new list item equals document dot create element. What is the type of element we're trying to create? A list item element. Let's set any attributes or properties. That's step two. Let's take our new list item, set the text content to equal coconut. We'll append this element. If I were to append this new list item to the body of my document, it's the last child of the body. We're not adding it to this ordered list. Now that we can see it, I'm going to add a few more attributes and properties. Let's take our new list item, access its ID attribute, set it to be coconut. Let's change the font weight. New list item, access the style, access the font weight, set it to be bold. And the background color, access the style, access the background color. I'll set the background color to be light green. We have our list item element. If I append it to the body, it's now the last child of the body of my document, not this ordered list found within the body. If I were to prepend it, this is what would happen. Prepend the new list item. It's now the first child. Now we'll select our ordered list of fruits. Get element by ID, fruits, append the new list item. And it's now at the end at number four. Let's prepend to the ordered list. Get element by ID, fruits, prepend our new list item. Our coconut is now at number one. How can we insert our coconut between apple and orange? Here's how. Since these list item elements have an ID, I could use that. Let's get the ID of orange. Const orange get element by ID orange. Instead of selecting the body, we're going to select the ordered list that has an ID of fruits. Document dot get element by ID. The ID that I'm selecting is fruits. Select the ordered list of fruits. Insert the new list item before the orange. Our coconut is now at number two. Let's insert the coconut before the banana. The ID was banana. Const banana. Insert the new list item before the banana. Our coconut is now at number three. You could insert before apple too. I will get the ID of apple. Const apple. Insert the new list item before the apple. And it's back at the beginning. What if these list items don't have IDs? Let's eliminate those. We would need to use query selector to select all list items from the ordered list of fruits. So I'm going to use query selector all. Select the ID of fruits. Then select any list item descendants within this ID. This will return a node list that stores all of the current list items within this ordered list. We need to select our ordered list of fruits, not the body. Document.getElementById. I will select our ordered list of fruits. Insert the new list item before list items at index 0. That will insert the coconut before the apple. Let's increment our index to 1. 
our coconut is now before the orange. Now it's before the banana. And now it's after the banana. If I need to remove this list item, I would need to select it first. So let's append the new list item to fruits. I will get the ID of the ordered list of fruits. Remove the child of new list item. And it's now gone. All right, everybody. So that is how we can add, change, and remove HTML elements using JavaScript.